In the highlands of Scotland lies Loch Ness, one of the world's most iconic lakes. Famous, of course, for its most mysterious resident, the Loch Ness Monster. Known as Nessie, the monster has captured imaginations around the world for over half a century, spawning a substantial tourism industry and becoming one of Scotland's most visited locations. There have been thousands of reported sightings of Nessie, one even dating back as far as 565 AD. For decades, scientists, enthusiasts, and tourists alike have been trying to solve the mystery of Loch Ness. Loch Ness lies about four hours north of Scotland's capital, Edinburgh. Driving to Loch Ness will take you through the scenic Scottish Highlands, home to many lakes, or lochs as they are called in Scottish Gaelic. Loch Ness itself is around 22 miles long, one and a half miles wide, with a maximum depth of 744 feet. The loch is connected to the ocean from the north via the River Ness, near the city of Inverness. To the south, Loch Ness is connected to other lochs via rivers and the Caledonian Canal. In Fort Augustus, which is the southernmost point of Loch Ness, there are five lochs that are part of the Caledonian Canal, controlling the flow of boats from one body of water to another. Other sites at Loch Ness include the famous Urquhart Castle, the castle sits right above the loch and affords incredible views of the entire area as well as Urquhart Bay. The first records of the castle date back to 1296. Over the centuries it suffered through various raids and battles. Ultimately, the castle was severely damaged in the 17th century to prevent its use by a Jacobite rebellion. The nearby village of Drumna Drachit is home to rival Nessie museums, the Loch Ness Center and Exhibition, as well as Nessie Land. Both museums offer a chance to explore the mythology of Nessie, as well as some of the science behind the expeditions. The Loch Ness Center examines Nessie from a more skeptical viewpoint. The end of the Cretaceous, 65 million years ago, slid towards catastrophe for the reptiles. No trip to Loch Ness is complete without a boat ride on the loch. Sonar scanners aboard allow visitors to keep an eye out for any unusual readings. What exactly could it be lurking in the murky waters? Various theories attempt to explain the Loch Ness Monster. The most popular theory is that Nessie is some sort of prehistoric aquatic dinosaur like a plesiosaur, which has miraculously survived extinction millions of years ago. The serpent-like appearance seen in some sightings has led speculation that large eels are responsible for Nessie sightings. In fact, eels are known to inhabit Loch Ness. Others point to boat wakes, waves, and ripples creating the illusion that something might be swimming under the surface. This type of phenomenon can be observed abundantly on the loch. Floating logs, hallucinations, and even misidentifications of common animals are also pointed to as explanations for sightings of Nessie. 
One notable local resident has his own theory regarding the mystery. My name is Steve Feltham and for the last 25 years now I've been a full-time hunter of the Loch Ness Monster. The Wells catfish is my best guess. The thing that fits more of the eyewitness descriptions than anything else. I'm not saying that the Wells catfish explains all the sightings, it absolutely doesn't. Land sightings, neck sightings, multiple hump sightings, they're all not Wells catfish. And we have all of those sightings here. So whatever's in Loch Ness, there's more to be explained than just a Wells catfish. But a Wells catfish does explain some of the upturned back type sightings. It's a, it's a better guess at the moment than sturgeon, which has got a serrated spine, or dinosaurs, which I think is just too much of a long shot, or beings from another planet living on the bottom of the loch. You know, at the moment, that's my best guess, but it's not the final answer, so the mystery still remains to be solved. Perhaps we as humans are simply attracted to the idea of monsters still lurking in the darker corners of our world. Perhaps it is this hope that keeps Nessie and other monsters alive. Or maybe it's something else entirely. With roughly a million or so tourists around the loch each year, revenue is estimated in the range of 35 million US dollars annually. Dozens of expeditions by scientists and enthusiasts have been carried out on the loch for decades without any real conclusive evidence. There have been numerous Nessie hoaxes as well, the most notable being the 1933 surgeon's photo, which was later proved to be staged. Despite all odds pitted against Nessie's existence, sightings do persist. There was a woman driving along the road on the other side of the loch, the A82, and she was just round the headland here, and she got a brief sighting of something in the water, just a hump in the water near, just, just round a corner here, which she said was a solid object on calm water, just sitting there, this hump. Only very brief, and it's not it's not a brilliant sighting. It's we get a lot of these sort of glimpses of Nessie sightings. You know, at the moment it's the best we've got because this year there's been nothing else decent. The mystery of Loch Ness may never be resolved. On the other hand, Nessie has become a household name, solidified as one of the world's most popular monsters, ever present as a cultural icon. Loch Ness Monster, I must kill you. I'm growing tired of all these stories. With my love, you lie sleeping beneath the tide. Like
this moment.